Hello everyone, this video is to help with the third quarter Algebra 1 project on exponential functions. Um, this is going to be more or less a walkthrough through some of the um, beginning aspects of the project with some of the background research and mathematical calculations. So um, we're going to start and like I said it's going to be almost like a mock problem where I'm literally going to be walking through the same steps you guys would be um, when you started or when you do start um, this project. So the first thing that I'm going to do, which would be the same thing that you guys would do first, is actually decide on what car we're going to pick or what car you're going to be investigating for this uh, project. So I'm going to go on carsforsale.com. Um, you get this little drop down of all the different makes um, of the cars that are available. Okay, I'm going to pick Volkswagen. Okay, and now we can pick a particular model. Um, I'm going to pick a Volkswagen Passat. And part of the project says your car has to be between certain years, so I want to make sure I'm not just picking like a 1991 um, Volkswagen. It would make some of our numbers be a little crazy. Um, so I'm going to pick a 2013. Uh, actually, let's do 2015. A little adventurous here. Um, so you see, you have some different choices here. Um, the one thing you do want to be careful of, um, notice here in the middle, we have one that's around 15,000 and one that's almost 33,000. Um, sometimes they might have, uh, you know, some type of fancy, you know, rims or something crazy. I'm assuming the $33,000 one has something special, obviously, about it. Um, if you look at all the other numbers on this page, they're all around the 13,000. So don't just go crazy and choose any number you see here. You might want to look a little bit more into it. Um, obviously a car from, you know, that's two or three years old shouldn't be more than what it's worth right now. So that probably has something hyped up or souped up uh, in it. So this one right here looks pretty good. Um, the main one, I'm going to be using that, let's say. Right, nothing crazy. So that is 13, and that's a Volkswagen Passat, and it's $13,488. Let's see if we can remember all that. Um, so the make was Volkswagen Passat. I think that's how you spell it. Um, and the number one more time was 13488 Okay, and this was a 2015 car, which means two years old. Okay, now for the original price, this is where it gets a little tricky. Um, it's rather difficult if you start Googling, like, how much was a Passat, you know, three years ago? What was the list price? It's just going to bring up prices of what they are now. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to be using the 2017 um price, market price, uh, whatever you want to call it, for a Passat, and that's going to be our original. Even though it's telling you how much the car is, like a brand new version of it, um, it's kind of serving as, hey, this is what that car was in 2015, if that makes sense. Okay, so there's a few different ways you can go about doing it. I'm literally just going to Google um, 2017 Volkswagen Passat, MSRP. Okay, um, you could use other websites like Kelly Blue Book, or you just Google, you know, different phrases. But MSRP usually gives you a pretty good idea of what this car should be. Okay, so you can see it should be around, um, you know, without any souped-up model, uh, souped-up conditions, or anything like that. A basic. Volkswagen Passat should be around $22,440. $22,440. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, this is how much the car was originally, quote unquote. Um, and now, two years later, it's around thirteen thousand dollars. So obviously, it's dropped almost um, right around nine nine thousand um, dollars in value in those two years. It's going down quite a bit. Um, so what we're going to do now is calculate 
the percent, and obviously this is going down, so we could more specifically refer to it as decay. And to do that, we're going to be using the exponential growth or decay model that we've been using in class um, for different things like interest and that. Um, so um, remember when we use this model, some of the different components we have here, we have um, our principal. That's like you're starting your initial rate. So obviously that's going to be our initial, uh, our original price of the 22000 Okay, the A on the left there has a few different names we can call it, but basically it's like what, you know, the end result, the answer, if you will. All right, um, if you have a bank account, how much interest did you make? How much is in your account now? So that's going to be our use price. In other words, something happened to that initial amount, and this is what we have left. 13488 That's what we're trying to figure out, what percent was kind of cut away from that original amount. Okay, obviously we're going to be using 1 minus R here. And forget about the plus. It's obviously going down. This is decay. And the time here, we picked a 2015 car. The current year is 2017, so you can probably guess the math here. It's two years. Okay? So the first thing that we're going to do is I get a little confused or can be a little confusing with that 1 minus R. Try to write a little bit neater here. Um, so I'm going to relabel that simply as X. Okay. In other words, I'm saying kind of like, hey, let's take this expre expression, um, 1 minus R, and we'll just instead use X to represent that. Okay, it's going to make it a little bit easier for us to start working around a few things, and we could always go back, and once we figure out what X is, we can just adjust it to more specifically find what R is. Okay, so now it makes things a little bit clearer. Um, if I want to solve for X, let's get rid of that big number in front. So I'm going to divide, it's the opposite of the multiplication here, by 22,440. Okay, um, you would want to grab a calculator here. When I divide, obviously it's not going to work out nicely. Um, you're going to get something like 0. 0. 0.60106, blah, blah, blah. Um, and if you write it as a fraction, fraction, it can actually be converted or simplified to 562 over 935. Um, if it is a decimal, you could just write down a few decimal places. Obviously, you don't want to just like write down to the nearest tenth already. Um, as a rule of thumb, you never want to round too early in a mathematical problem, only in your very last step. Okay, so now this is gone and we're simply left with x squared. Um, in our case, here, when we want to solve for something that's squared, we could simply take the square root. Um, I'm going to show you a different procedure because some of you guys are going to have something like x cubed here, x to the fifth maybe, x to the fourth. What do you do in those cases? Okay. Um, so what you're actually doing when you take the square root, you're really raising each side to the one half power. Each side because you want to keep it balanced. Okay. Usually we just draw the little square root radical. But like I said, this applies for any exponent. If it was x to the fourth, we would simply raise it to the one fourth power. Because anything times this reciprocal here, which we're going to do, our exponent rule, two times one half is simply one or x, x to the first or just x. Okay, same thing, if we have x to the fourth, by raising it to the one-fourth power, we would just, again, be left with x. Um, and now on the right, uh, excuse me, on the left-hand side, this is going to get a little messy, but we're going to raise that to the one-half power, and it's going to be something like 0.7752867. Kind of goes on forever there. Okay. So, what does that mean? Um, <clears throat> well, we've solved for x, we've accomplished what we want, but if we remember, we called x 1 minus r. So let's bring that back into the picture. Let's rewrite this a little bit neater. 5, 2, 8, 6, 7. Okay, so now if we want to identify what the rate is, we're simply saying, hey, something was subtracted from 1, so in other words, we could do 1 minus that 0.77 dot 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 that goes on forever. 
again using a calculator here, you'll get R equals 0.2247132. Okay, um, so that's a decimal rate of what we're dealing with decay wise as an actual percentage. Okay, we're looking at 22.47%. The project says nearest hundredth, so that's what we'll do right now. And that's our depreciation rate, or decay rate. So in other words, as of right now, every year, which is a very small sample size because we're only dealing with two years, um, the car is losing around 22.5% of its value, which is obviously quite large. Um, what you'll notice is that people that pick a little bit on the older side of cards, your rate is going to be a little bit lower. Um, because obviously, you know, a car is not going to continue to lose 25% value every year. It's usually a sharp decline right away, and then it kind of gradually um, slows down a little bit. So if you do pick like a 2016 model or 2015 model, you're going to see that sharp decline. Um, it's not that you did anything wrong. Okay, so now that we have an actual rate, um, we've answered kind of part of the problem you're doing in early on with your project. And now the second component is to actually put together a function, okay, which is obviously, I'm going to call it R of X. It's going to look the exact same as what we kind of set up first here in red. So I have my initial amount. Okay, I can do 1 minus 0.22, or I could just simply leave it as what we had earlier up here as our base. It's kind of doing the subtraction of 1 minus 0.22. Um, I'm just going to call it 5, 3 rounding here because of the 8 afterwards, to the x power. So in other words, using this function, I can predict how much my car is going to be worth after um, 3 years, 4 years, 5 years, and etc. Um, down the line. And now using software such as Desmos, we can type this in. So I'm just going to clean this up here. Um, we have 22,440. times 0.7753 to the x power. We don't want to forget that about the beginning. Okay. Um, now you're really going to have to play around with your scale here. Obviously, look at the numbers we have, 22,000. Um, so you got a good picture here. If you zoom out a little bit further, um, you'll get even a more accurate picture of what you're dealing with. Okay, so obviously you can see the exponential J-shaped curve. Um, and some of the aspects that this project asks you about are the realistic nature of your model. Sure, it works well in the beginning, but if we take a look, does it really make sense that in 50 years your car is worth about six cents? Um, probably not. Um, even something that's you know a piece of garbage is worth more than six cents. A plastic can is worth about five cents, right? So these models work good, but obviously there are some limitations when we start using them in big picture predictions. Um, some other aspects from Desmos that you guys know about, we could use the table feature. Um, and I think your project asks you to predict something like um, five years, so you could just change the X value here. 10 years. Okay, 20 years and 30 years. Let's just say those numbers. Okay, so obviously you could see after 30 years, our car should only be around $10, which um, probably not that realistic based on our very limited window of the model that we picked. Um, so those are some things for you to consider during the uh, written portion of your project where you can expand upon these results. Okay, hopefully this helped with some of the mathematical calculations. Um, and Desmos related applications of your project. If you have any further questions, feel free to comment below or send me an email, and I'll try my best to help you guys out with any questions. Okay, thank you for watching.